Okay, so maybe I'll start by introducing the speaker today, Ji Bin Zhao, uh, who received his PhD degree from Shanghai Jiotong University in China. He was a research scientist at Riken Brain Science Institute and then uh, joined as a unit leader and became uh, the team leader for the Tensor Learning Team. He's also a visiting professor at Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology and Saitama Institute of Technology in Japan. He, his research interests include machine learning, tensor factorization, tensor networks, and brain signal processing. He's very prolific, published more than 150 scientific papers, and has uh, two monographs on tensor networks and he's quite active in serving the community as well, uh, being an area chair for many top tier ML conferences. And he has organized several workshops at NeurIPS and Ichikai. Jibin, looking forward to your talk. Please take it away. Thanks to Volkan for kind of introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to have this opportunity to, to give you a talk in today. Today, I will talk about the title of my talk is Efficient Machine Learning with Tensor Networks. And as we know, the successful of deep learning actually highly rely on the three factors there. We have a huge number of uh, big data sets and the high performance computation, and also big models with a huge number of parameters and the complex models. And the Tensor Network actually is a basic mathematical tools it was widely studied in quantum physics, and it also be useful to process the uh, large data or high dimensional data processing, and uh, can be developed for the acceleration of a computation. And quite recently, it was applied to uh, also develop the new tensor, uh, uh, new deep learning models and algorithms. So the, today I will talk about uh, two topics. First one is learning from incomplete and limited data. And second is parameter efficient machine learning models. So in, my, in many real, uh, applications, we have a multi-dimensional data. For example, in recommendation system, we have a user item and uh, along the time purchase history. Such data has multi-dimensional structure. And we don't have a lot of um, samples so like a uh, uh, traditional machine learning uh, uh, problems, we have a huge number of samples and we can train the uh, deep neural network. And in knowledge graph data, we know some connections or relations between the entities. And uh, uh, our goal is to capture the information from such data and to make prediction for the missing values. For such kind of data, the data is multi-dimensional structure and we don't have a lot of huge number of samples. So we need to find a method to capture well the data structure information and to fit a model to be uh, better generalized to the missing values. So such task is uh, learning from an inc uh, incomplete tensor to predict the values for unobserved positions. So then the tensor completion method is very popular to solve this task. And the optimization problem is uh, formulated as shown here. We try to solve this optimization problem. First one is fitting error. We try to find a good estimation to the observed data Y under in the observed positions. And depending on the, your noise assumption, you can choose different, uh, different norm as such loss function. And the second part is structure regularizer, which is a key to, which a key factor to ensure your model is good uh, generalization to the missing, missing data. And the challenge is, is how to obtain the best data efficiency. That means we use a smaller number of data point to fit the model and uh, to make generalized to the missing values. The second is efficient optimization. So most of the tensor completion method can be summarized into two different type of approach. First one is we, we can use a uh, non-convex relaxation to convert the low rank uh, constraints to the nuclear norm minimization. Because the low rankness assumption 
can is uh, is already demonstrated uh, to be a good structure regulator to um, to have a good generalization. But such convex optimization is easy to optimize, but the problem is not very scalable. Another type of approach is we assume the data estimation data satisfy a particular tensor network structure. Then we try to learn the latent factors in the tensor network structures. But the problem is it's difficult to choose optimal rank and also difficult to find the best tensor network structure or uh, a topology. Depending on your applications, you can also use prior knowledge like smoothness, non-activity, or other set of information from other data sets. So in hyperspectral satellite image, we usually need to do the denoising task. And because such image have a high resolution and it's a huge image, that it's usually not showing the low rankness on the global. So people are usually using non-local technique. The idea is we, we find the smaller patches and we group many similar patches together to build a tensor. Then such tensor satisfies the low rank assumption. Then we can apply the low rank tensor approximation to do the denoising task. Also, when your missing, missing data, missing patterns is not uniformly distributed, like such as the whole slice missing or whole fiber missing, the originally low rank assumption or low rank approximation doesn't work well. So to solve such issues, we consider the low rank needs is not on the original data space, but on the uh, transformed uh, space. So then we can convert our optimization problem to the nuclear norm mini minimization under the linear transformation. And given the fitting area smaller than a scalar. Based on such framework, we can also have a theoretical guarantee for the error bound. But how to choose the linear transformation become a new problem to solve. When, here we show the one example, one particular linear transformation, which is we use a tensorization as a linear transformation. This procedure can change the low order data to the high order data. After that, we assume that high order tensor can be re represented by the tensor network structure and finally to do the reconstruction. And to solve this problem, we combine the two different type of approach that the fitting error is the same. And we assume our estimation satisfy a tensor network structure. In particular here, we show the tensor ring structure and we learn the latent factors G1 to GD. But to avoid the choose the rank manually, we impose the low rank structure to the all core tensors. Instead of we, uh, we impose a low rank needs on estimation Y height, we change the low rank needs to the core tensors. Then we, we can minimize the nuclear norm on core tensors. Since all core tensors has much smaller size than estimation Y, based on this, we can further improve the computation efficiency. So now the question is, why the tensorization is useful and the, how the tensor network can be better rep, uh, represented such data. So now I give a, a simple example to show the tensorization procedure. Given an image, and the first step we divide the image as several patches and we can uh, concatenate the patches along the additional mode. So we generate a tensor, three order tensor. Then the such procedure can be repeated again for each sliced matrix to further divide as smaller patch and uh, concatenate them. And finally, each patches can be a vector. So put them back together, we get a high order tensor. So if we use tensor network graph notation to represent such procedure, we can see from this graph notations, the node represents data and the number of edge represents the order of uh, data. So the matrix have two edges. So we convert this to a high order tensor by dividing the row index as a three and the same to the column index. Then we combine the index together 
I1 to G1, I2, G2, I3 to G3 to get a new tensor, to build a new tensor. So if you look at the third index, index three, which shown as blue, which if we uh, impose low rankness on mode three, that means we can capture the correlations or dependency between these four patches. And if we consider the first index, we can we capture the dependency or correlations between the uh, each pixels in the small, uh, smallest patches. So that means tensorization procedure give us an opportunity to explore the correlations of patches in multi skills. And the next, what is the tensor network? Actually, it's a natural generalization of tensor factorization, which is for 3D tensor to much more high order tensors. And we can use tensor network to represent the n order tensors as a contraction of n small tensors. So in physics, this is usually used to describe the quantum many body system. There are already some popular tensor network structure like tensor chain, theoretical Tucker, and the PEPS Mila. So before we introduce uh, later, we, we first briefly introduce tensor network operations by using such diagram. And uh, if we multiplication of two matrix, we can represent it by such graph. We simply connect the common index between A and B. The connection means we do the contraction between A and B. It's a summation along the index G. If there's no connection, it means tensor product or we call the out product, same, same thing. And in high order tensor case, multilinear product is very commonly used. For the multilinear product, we must give the index to, uh, to indicate which mode you need to do the contraction. And beyond the tensor chain models, we also introduce a, a more generalized model, which called the tensor ring decomposition. So the idea is we have a n or core tensors, and we do the circular contractions, which have a loop structure. To understand it, given an element, we have n indices. According to this n indices, we can we can get out. A uh, uh, sequence uh, matrix from each core tensors according to each in, in index. Then we do the sequential uh, product of all the matrix, and later we do the uh, trace operation to get the scale. To further enhance the model expressiveness, we also introduce the fully connected tensor network. So. Now we, we consider the connection between all core tensors. They have the connections. And the big advantage of such models, they have the transpositional invariance. That means if the original data, uh, data X, we can permute arbitrarily or randomly, but the result is invariant. But the disadvantage is uh, very obvious. We have much more parameters which has an exponential uh, scale to the n, the order n. But the theory also shows uh, the relationship between the unfolding matrix rank and the tensor network, a fully connected tensor network rank. So that, that means in practice, even we have many connections, but each connection have very uh, small rank r. However, in uh, real applications, we don't know how to choose tensor chain or tensor ring or which tensor network is best suitable for our data. So, so some example shows even probably uh, arbitrary tensor network, probably the optimal or the best models for the data set. So the question is how to learn an optimal tensor network structure from the data. And this problem is difficult because even for the nine order tensors, there are 68 billion candidates. To solve these issues, we first encoding the tensor network as a graph, uh, uh, graph notations or graph representation. The, con um, the context is core tensors V. And we encode the connection between core tensors as a, a adjacency matrix. 
So the, the zero means there is no connection between the first call with the first call and the first call with the third call, no connection. And then the number means the connection, uh, uh, number means the connection and the rank of these two calls. So because tensor network usually used to compress data. So we try to find the tensor network structure or topology, which has a, has a high maximize the compression rate. So we try to minimize the, uh, minimize the compression rate, uh, maximize the compression rate over the A, uh, the adjacency matrix. But the A is discrete value is not easily to solve by continuous optimization. So we develop algorithm by evolutional algorithm to solve such problem. Now let's talk about supervised learning for missing data. And our data features have missing values and the true label Y. Our goal is to learn the classifier F hat, which is the best approximation to the true classifier uh, trained on the, uh, the uh, complete data. And uh, we also assume there is a function G first to do the completion of the data from X to uh, make reconstruction of data, then train the classifier. But simply do the two step sequentially, there are some problem because if we do the completion uh, independently, for example, given an image, we don't know how to exactly recover of original data. It's three or eight because the label information is not used, it's ignored. So that means such procedure is cannot ensure the statistical consistency of a classifier. Then we propose a simultaneous uh, optimization for to solve this problem. And the, for completion, we assume the sparse coding to for the completion part, that each data point can be represented by the overcomplete dictionary matrix with very sparse coefficients. And our loss function can be seen, shown here. This is a classification loss based on the reconstructed data X height. And the re reconstruction data X height can be represented by the sparse coding uh, procedure with over complete dictionary and the very sparse coefficients. Then we can learn the theta and the dictionary D and the, the coefficient alternative by the optimization. And then theoretically, we also prove that if some condition satisfied, we can prove the such classifier if, uh, if it, the classifier is successfully classified the reconstructed data point, it can be also successfully classified the original data point. So that means we don't need our reconstruction is exactly same with the original data, but we try to keep the classifier, classifier hyperplane is same, consistent. So this condition means this epsilon means the distance between the reconstructed data to the boundary. If such distance is larger than the, uh, the moment between the reconstruction and the original data, then we can guarantee the classifier is same as uh, can be uh, classified the original data very well. Also, it shows by the experiment results that if the uh, epsilon larger than G, we can also we can always successfully classify. Now we also found that if the sparsity is high, high level sparsity like sparse coding, we have a high level sparsity, and such condition can be easily satisfied. Some results show that the performance is much better than using the sequential approach by completion independently and the training classifier and also some other method. And the missing pattern can be random missing or even the uh, irregular missing path. So even half letters are missing, we can reconstruct such image, but we don't require the reconstruction is exactly the same as original data, but we 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 want to the reconstruction keep the same classes. So next I will talk about the tensor network for efficient model. 
Now, because many uh, many new models like fundamental models like GPT, they have the, uh, the very huge model parameters. And also the theory shows that over parameterized deep learning models can have a double descent and they can avoid overfitting problem and give the good performance. But to reduce the memory uh, efficiency or to reduce storage and also energy efficiency, we still want to remove the redundancy from the parameters. So the, the task is how to compress the weight parameters but keep the comparable performance. And also the strategy should apply, uh, should be compatible to the standard algorithm. We, we don't want to uh, use a new algorithm to solve this. And furthermore, if possible, we also hope to improve the computation efficiency. So the compression of weight parameters can be done during training or after training. Today, we will talk about uh, compression dinner training from the scratch. So this is a standard fully connected layer and we assume the, uh, the weight parameter W is huge. We try to remove redundancy of W. And we tensorize W to a high order tensor. Then we represent it as a tensor train format. By using such representation, the number of parameters can be reduced uh, uh, significantly by the this, this root of original size. But there is a rank R square, which means if the structure have a low rank, we can get much higher compression. But if the rank is high, the compression is, uh, performance is low. And next to guarantee, to ensure the computation of this more conveniently, we also need to tensorize the input layer to a high order tensor. Then we can apply the tensor network operations for efficient computation for this layer. Just simply connect uh, the individual mode. So now we also show the, how the uh, algorithm like uh, gradient descent and the back um, propagation doesn't affect even we change W as a tensor network format. So we try to optimize the core tensors G instead of optimize the, the W. So the key point is how to compute the gradient uh, uh, core tensor G on the tensor network. Because tensor network are all multi-linear operations. So the gradient can be computed very conveniently by simply remove this core tensor and make contraction of all rest core tensors. So finally, we can compute the gradient tensor as the gradient of this core tensor. But the input layer is still on ordinary data, which is a vector or matrix. So one paper proposed a new idea to change the input layer also as a tensor network structure. So the project, they use a nonlinear mapping for each feature X to a two dimensional vectors. And this idea actually is inspired by quantum system. The value means the probability of this, uh, this value to be zero and the probability of this value to be one. And this vector is normalized. L2 norm is equal to one. So this is a, can be considered as a quantum state. Then, after doing this nonlinear mapping for each feature, we can do the tensor product for all the features we generate a rank one tensor. So which is shown as a tensor network format. However, the dimension is increased dramatically from the D-dimensional data to two power, two, two power D. But this shows that you even use such input layer and the weight uh, weight uh, compression as shown in pre previous slides, they can achieve very good performance on amnist by using single layer, just one layer. And this method also quite related to the kernel method. But in kernel method, we use a kernel trick to avoid nonlinear mapping explicitly. But here they use nonlinear mapping explicitly uh, by just compress the weight to make it uh, suitable or to tractable. 
such idea, compression idea, can also apply to the convolutional neural network to compress the kernels. But uh, some researchers show that if we have a well-trained model, the kernel doesn't show the low rank needs. However, if we reparameterize the weight as the tensor, uh, tensor decomposition structure, then we learn from this initial point from the sketch, we can even reduce the generalization error. And the theory shows that higher compression can give us smaller generalization error bound. So in multimodal learning, we have several different modality data, and usually we need different neural network to get a representation uh, of different modality. After that, multi-model um, fusion of all features and then create uh, another uh, additional layers to give the output. So the key point is here is multi-model fusion. It's same as uh, same to apply to the visual question answering and the multi-model fusion is the key, key point. So the standard way is to use average or concatenation or summation to do the ten, uh, to do the fusion. But here we show that tensor product of uh, tensor network format can be a very useful uh, operation for tensor fusion. Such fusion can, uh, contains a very rich information, which include the linear features and the bilinear interaction between pairwise modality and the tree linear interaction between all three modality. And also the result shows that if we use all information, it's much better than we, uh, we remove any one of the interaction information. But the, the disadvantage is our dimension increase dramatically because using tensor fusion. And furthermore, if we want to capture more information by using the tensor fusion, the one idea is to concatenate the features from different modality. Then we do the tensor product of F by himself, by itself for P times. So we generate a P order tensors, so which contain more inf additional information, which has intermodal interaction and a high order inter interactions. We can see from here as an example. But again, the dimensionality is increased dramatically, which is exponentially scaled with a P. To solve this problem, we must use the weight compression for the next layer. We assume that our weight for next layer must be represented as a tensor network. So by using this, we, we can not only to reduce number of parameters from the exponential scale to P to linear scales, but also the computation is very uh, fast due to the tensor network operations. That means we don't need to compute tensor fusion explicitly. We just compute the F with a contraction with each core tensor individually. So finally, we have a more expressive power of models with not much increase of number of parameters. When we use multimodal learning for the time series data, and if the time series data is imperfect, like uh, uh, con con corrupted by the noises or some missing uh, data point as, uh, at the time point, so the question is how to learn robust representation from imperfect multimodal learning. And we can see that if the data has missing values or the noises, the low rank structure always is broken. So which means the rank will increase by such imperfect data. So based on this phenomena, we assume we first use tensor fusion for the each time point we get a tensor fusion. Then we do the summation of along all time point M, and we assume M is low rank. If the data is incomplete or the, there is some missing values, we can use low rank needs as regularizers in our loss function, which is a good strategy to, uh, to improve the robustness for multimodal time series data. 
And also in the time series data, the uh, RNISTM is the most popular and successful models. But in last year, one paper mentioned RN and RNISTM uh, actually don't have long memory from a statistic perspective. That means if we compute the auto covariance and we do the summation of auto covariance, if the summation is converged, that means it has short memory and otherwise it has long memory. So this is a standard RNN, the single layer, the hidden state can be computed by the previous state and the current input. Uh, sorry, here is T not T minus one. So now we try to change this operation to the tensor, tensor power recurrent models. So idea is we use the multilinear product. We first concatenate the current input and the previous hidden state as a long vector. Then we do the multilinear product with the weight tensors. And we can do this multilinear product for P times. So it's equivalent to to do the tensor fusion as we show in multimodal learning for the p-order tensor fusion then we uh, after this we have a fully connected layer g by using this actually we we remove the nonlinear activations instead we use this tensor fusion to generate the nonlinearity and based on this framework we show that if the p is large we can uh, uh, we can give us long memory and a small p will lead us short memory. But when the p is large, the algorithm is unstable due to uh, sometimes the gradient uh, explosion occurs. To further solve these issues, we wonder if we can learn the p from the data. But the p is an order of tensor, it's integer. So Instead, uh, so to, to do this, we give a more strict assumption. We assume the tensor and weight tensor G is symmetric. Then furthermore, we assume the G can be decomposed by the symmetric tensor decomposition. Then such, uh, this layer operation can be converted as such formula. So look at, compare this to standard RNN. We can see that we change this layer as an ensemble of uh, R layers. So it's an ensemble of several different subnet. And each layer is uh, with the uh, weight parameters with the input and the uh, past uh, hidden state from previous time with the power P. So that means our nonlinear function is the P, poly, uh, P polynomial function. And we have a uh, several subnet. And furthermore, we want to learn the P. So we we, give, we change the P from discrete value to continuous value, and then we use some kind of a <coughs> gradient descent method to learn the optimal T. And for the time series data, if our each time point, the data have also the high order tensor structure. And if we have uh, um, the missing point on a specific time point, we don't have a continuous time series data. So this is a, a very popular applications in video with missing stream or the stock market price uh, prediction. So we hope to build a model which can, can learn uh, train the model from such, uh, such a time series data with missing time point. And we also hope our model can be predictive for continuous time point, not only for the uh, discrete time point. So if we use tensorized uh, and neural network or RNN, it's incapable to handle such kind of irregular time points and it's not able to prediction for continuous time point. So we, if we use neural, uh, neural ODE and the, uh, this method doesn't consider the tensor structure for each time point. To solve this, we combine the, this idea together, we propose a tensor neural ODE. So we have a time series data, which is a tensor, a tensor time series data. Now we try to build a model to learn the de uh, derivative of such time series data. So that means if we give a initial point Y, 
we can just compute the integral of this model with the distance be, uh, between the initial point. We can compute uh, prediction for any time point. And uh, to capture the data structure, we change the uh, neural network model to the tensor contraction layer. So we find the three different matrix for the projection or transformation on each mode and the plus the nonlinear activations. So in the end, I will introduce some uh, new trends and directions in this field by other researchers. For example, some researchers from physics field, they built the uh, machine learning model uh, using such uh, tensor networks for unsupervised learning, supervised learning, or generative models. And uh, they, they apply the nonlinear mapping for the input layer and apply the tree structure tensor network. It's similar to like dimension reduction, like kernel PCA or something like that. And then on the top, they apply tensor network for classifier. Or some paper use the MILA or more complicated tensor network models. They can achieve the performance is comparable to the state art, but still, mm, still uh, a little slightly worse. Also, the hybrid model to combine the deep learning like CNN as the first step to extract the latent re representation. And after that, they apply the two dimensional tensor network as a classifier. And such model can give better performance than using the standard CIN with a fully connected layer. Also, quantum machine learning is attracted more and more attention in recent years. And Google released the TensorFlow quantum library in 2020. So here we show that this is a standard quantum machine, learning, quantum neural network models. The difference is input is quantum state. And if we want to use quantum machine learning to process the classical data, the first step we need to encode the classical data into the quantum circuit as a parameters or as a operations to encode our classical data here. After that, they apply many uh, quantum circuit to do the transformation and similarly several layers to give the output. The output is because it's the quantum state so they need the measurement to get uh, concrete values. And uh, also borrow the idea from machine learning, they can build the loss function to, to adjust the parameters uh, in the quantum circuit to find the uh, model parameters. And some researchers show that the tensor network can be conveniently converted to the quantum circuit like Theoretical Tucker can be converted as the quantum circuit conveniently. But there is some, some limitation or constraints that each uh, tensor cores must be unitary operation. And the tensor chain can be also converted as a quantum circuit. So by using this, the tensor network, uh, purely con uh, tensor network models can be run on the quantum computer. And it shows that robustness to noises and also such tensor network circuit provide the uh, qubit efficient schemes. So finally, in summary, tensor network are useful tools for representation of high order structured data and also useful for efficient reparameterization uh, re of deep neural network models. And some theory shows that tensor network have expressive, uh, expressive power similar to deep neural network. But I think the performance still, there is some gap between the deep neural network and tensor network. So the reason I guess is tensor network are always uh, only have the multilinear operations there it lacks of nonlinearity. And I'm all, uh, in the future, we are more interested in to investigate the robustness of tensor network models to the adversary attack and the interpretability of the tensor network based on, uh, models. Because tensor network is multilinear uh, operations, so we assume the interpretability should be better than the neural network. 
So finally, I would like to thank my team members, uh, especially some postdoc and uh, visiting scientists and other part-timer interns and the remote collaborators. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chibin. So questions for Chibin. There's one on the, the Q&A chat, Chibin, if you would like to take a look. Okay. Yeah, the question is, um, hello, thank you for an interesting talk. I have a question about compressing weight of neural network by tensor chain network. Does this compression increase or decrease execution time in practice? Yeah, it's a good question. So, uh, for basically the computation, uh, computation is same or even the better, because the parameters are much less than the original weight parameters, and due to the tensor network operations, if the input layer is tensorized as a tensor, we can apply the tensor network operation that connect the uh, core tensors individually. So the computation we also improved, but not dramatically. It depends on the rank. Actually, Chivin, um, there are also some sketching approaches that could give you some quick computational benefits. I think Joel Trapp uh, had a, a paper for um, compression, approximating um, tensors via sketches. So you could have, yeah, for example, your tensor network and its yeah. sketch. So maybe you can do something quickly with the sketch and then complement things with the actual tensor network. There could be many ideas that are interesting. I like yeah. this particular um, approach. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I know this, I, actually, we also have one paper to do the sketching for the tensor rain decomposition. So we can, uh, there are many problems how to sample the data uh, efficiently and how to do the sketching uh, using the less number of uh, uh, data to, to, uh, to develop the method to reconstruct original data precisely. Yeah, yeah, you, yes. There is one more question, but not on Q&A. So on chat, I think, <laughs> Uh, somebody wrote, um, how do you calculate distance in tensor network? I'm not sure the, uh, what you mean the distance, but if you apply the, for example, if you uh, apply, uh, want to com compute the traditional dis distance, you can vectorize the tensor network as a vector, then you can compute the distance by inner product or some L2 norm, L1 norm, or different distance or metrics. Uh, but I think your question is, you want, want to ask how to compute the distance efficiently by using tensor network structure, just to use core tensors. Uh, I think, uh, as I know that the inner product between the two tensor network can be computed efficiently. But if you do the sum, just the summation uh, uh, minus if one tensor network minus another tensor network, uh, I think there's no good way to compute by the core tensors uh, as far as I know. But some operation can be computed efficiently. We, we don't need to make contraction of tensor network to original space. We just compute on the core tensor space very efficiently. Yeah, I hope this answer uh, the questions for the ICA. Can I also ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is a kind of typical question you will have, but so given the tensor you know, tools, so how can you find the suitable structure given data? Mm. Yeah, uh, that's right, because uh, currently researchers using the manually choose that this structure or that structure, basically they just choose a very popular structure like tensor chain or tensor ring or hierarchical tucker. But how to find the optimal structure, which probably will be random. And as I shown you in the slides, we have tried one step to solve this problem, to find the structure. Um, but still, it's only for the data. Uh, given the data and uh, uh, tensor data, we try to find the completion task. But if we apply this idea to the deep neural network weight compression, 
it's still we don't know how to find a good structure for compression the weight in deep neural network but if we have a yeah so you know for the architectures in neural networks people do what is called as neural architecture search and there are yeah. some popular formulations with optimization darts right. and so on and so forth you could envision mm -hmm. maybe a, another optimization formulation for tensors and there things mm -hmm. uh, could also work uh, as far as i'm concerned what do you think about yeah, right. this yeah yeah right we also think about this and uh, we discuss how to maybe uh, a neural network architecture search method can be applied to tensor network structure I think you search. Can. Yeah, Masashi's question is really on the point here. Yeah. Mm, right. And I have one we more hope... question. Mm. Uh, yeah. sorry. Uh, do you still have something to say? Uh, no, no. So, so my, my second question is about nonlinearity. So, as mm -hmm. you said, so tensors have nice multilinear structure, but suppose we want to incorporate some some nonlinearity in the system so how can can you do that in a computationally efficient way mm, currently i didn't see any paper to consider nonlinearity in the uh, tensor networks the only nonlinearity is generated by the input layer so they, they change the input to nonlinear mapping to the, uh, the rank one tensor but I think I have some idea, but not we, we didn't know how it works if possible. We we consider after each layer uh, the tensor network transformation, we can impose simply the nonlinearity to the each core tensors. So what, what happens if you have like, like pre-processing and you know, non-linear pre-processing and then okay, tensor factorization, and after that you have Another nonlinear nonlinear transformation, then have another mm -hmm. tensor transformation and things like that. Yeah, yeah. The, you repeat this in in an alternate way. Can you still compute everything in a computationally efficient way? Yeah, if we impose nonlinearity on the whole output of the layer, mm. we cannot use the efficient computation. But uh, I, I mentioned I I, I want to uh, see that if we impose nonlinearity to the each core tensors. Mm. So then we, we didn't change the tensor network structure after the I layer. See. So, yeah, because if you apply nonlinearity to the whole output, so you need to contraction uh, tensor network to original space, then the computation efficiency will be loose. Mm. So I'm, I'm thinking to impose nonlinearity to the each core tensors. I see. Instead of the whole output. So in the case of like matrix, what, what does it mean? Mm. So you compute eigenvectors and apply nonlinear transformation to eigenvectors or something like that? If, uh, for the matrix case, if uh, we have a matrix W and you decompose W as A multiplied B. Mm. So, and the input layer X transformed by the A and B. After a transform A, we give the nonlinearity, and after B, another nonlinearity. Mm. Mm. So if we use the nonlinearity R after uh, input two through the A and the B together, it's same as original, original neural network, mm. just the compression of the weight. But if we impose nonlinearity on each each factors, it may generate a different. Uh, it's not equivalent to the neural network with only compression the weight. And hope that it performs better than the original one. Yeah, oh, yeah, hope so. But uh, <laughs> I'm afraid it's not easy yeah, to achieve the better performance. Mm. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Chivin. Yeah, thank I you. Guess this concludes the, the talk. Thanks all for uh, joining the, the talk. And uh, thank Chibin for a great talk.